For the first one, I'm choosing this pumpkin, and I'm using a marker pen to draw on a design. This one's going to have a wide open mouth with snarling fangs. <laughs> And I'm drawing on these kind of evil looking eyes, and we're going to be painting in sunken eyeballs. If you find your design isn't quite right, you can scrub it off, then wipe it dry, and redo your design. And to colour this pumpkin, I'm going to be using these acrylic paints. And it is very useful to have a selection of different sized brushes. I'm starting with some black paint and one of the wider brushes, and we're colouring in the entire mouth. If you find your paint is a bit thick, you can always add a little bit of water. And one of the great things about these acrylic paints is they're really easy to use, and the colours are really bright and vibrant. And once you've finished in the mouth, we're moving up to the eyes and painting all of this surrounding area black around the eyeball. What's really good about this design is it really doesn't matter if you go over the lines a little bit or make a mistake, you don't have to worry about being too accurate. And while we're leaving this black paint to dry, let's make a start on the next one. Now for this one, I'm actually going to turn the pumpkin up onto its side like this, so that we can use the stem here for a nose. This is something I've done before, and I really enjoy using the features of the pumpkin as part of the design. So to work on it, I think it's best to lay it back on its base, and it's really nice to incorporate some of these wrinkle lines in part of the design. So I'm drawing on some slightly menacing looking eyes in between two of these natural creases. Do the same on the other side, and I'm going to do something similar with the mouth. This mouth is going to be nice and wide open, and I'm giving it some slightly goofy looking teeth. Let's draw in some eyeballs as well, and some pupils. Then we're ready to start painting. This time I'm going to start with white, and I'm also using a smaller brush. For this part now, you do want to try to be quite accurate, to keep it looking nice and neat. But if you do happen to go over the line a bit, or slip and make a mistake, it doesn't really matter, you can easily just wipe off the paint, and touch it up again. And once we've done the eyes, we can work on the teeth. I opted to go with these quite large, kind of squared off, sort of goofy looking teeth. But of course, you could go with whatever you like, some fangs or maybe a big smile. Whatever sort of style you like. And with those all painted in, I'm actually going to move up and give the eye a bit of colour. I'm opting for blue on this, so I went ahead and painted it in. Again, try to be nice and accurate, but it's no big problem if you make a mistake. And now the teeth have dried, I'm going to use this big brush and some black again to carefully paint around them and fill in the entire mouth. Before this year, I've never really painted an entire pumpkin before, and I've got to say I really am enjoying it, and I'm really looking forward to seeing them all together at the end. And once I'd finished painting the mouth, I actually decided to give some parts of it a second coating where the paint was a bit thin. The colours definitely look a lot better for it, a lot deeper and richer. And while I'm at it, I even painted in some pupils. Check that out, he's looking great, but he's not quite finished yet. I need to leave this to dry a bit more, and we'll be coming back to it. But now this one's dry, it's time to start adding some detail. I started by painting in some white eyeballs, and again with these you can see the paint's a little bit thin, so I'll have to give them a second coat when the paint's dry. And next is onto the teeth, for this one I'm going to give it some lovely big fangs. So I used a slightly smaller brush, and started painting the fangs from the top. I want them to be nice and long and sharp, with a point on the bottom. <laughs> you kind of just make it up a bit as you're going along. And now we've done that top row, let's start across the bottom, and I'm spacing them so there's one in between each of the top row. If you're enjoying this video, please do consider subscribing. And and it really is starting to come together now. But I think I'm going to make the side ones on the top a little bit longer. So I added a bit more paint to bring them down a little bit. Then did the same over here on this side too. And that is looking great, just need to touch up a few here and there. And if the paint is dry enough now, you can give them a second coat. I recoated the eyeballs too, and after that had dried, I started giving them a bit of colour. I fancied drying green on this one, so I did that on both eyes. Then decided to use this red sharpie to add some more detail, making them a bit bloodshot and showing the vessels. Finally I painted in the pupils, leaving a little white reflection in each. Then I used a little extra colour around the eyes to help give them a bit of depth. And I used my black marker pen to refine the edge of the teeth, making sure they're nice and pointy. There we go, that's looking wicked. But for the next one, I'm going to be drawing this large open mouth full of teeth. There's going to be a full row of jagged teeth along the top, and some more here across the bottom. Now for this one, as well as painting it, we're also going to be doing some carving. And this pack of pumpkin tools is ideal. There's a link in the description if you want to buy some. So I started by using this saw to cut all the way around where the mouth opening is going to be. And carefully, with a bit of yanking, I was able to pull the whole thing out in one. Ha, look at that, all those insides are so stringy. But actually I think that's a really cool look, so instead of scooping all 
all of that out, let's leave it. Next up, I'm using this chisel to carefully remove all of the skin in front of the teeth. It's got a nice sharp front to this tool, so it cuts through easily. But you do need to be careful because you don't want to make a mistake here and cut outside of the line. Once you've done across the top, you can use it to shape the teeth a little bit. And I also used a couple of the other tools to get right up in between the teeth, clean them up a bit, and really define them. I seriously love carving pumpkins. It's such a fun activity. And once you've done across the top, we're going to do the same across the bottom, working from one side all the way along. Clean it up a little bit with your pick. Then I also used the chisel again to cut off the back of the teeth so they're not so deep. And once you're happy with the mouth, we can draw on the eyes. Now for this one, I'm going to go for the classic pumpkin triangular eyes. So I inked them in with my marker. Next we're going to paint these pumpkin teeth white. If the teeth still feel a little bit wet, you might want to dry them off first with some kitchen paper. So using my wider brush again, I gave these teeth a good covering. And once I'd done the top and bottom, it was looking like this. Next I decided to draw some rounds for the eyes and pupils. Then I started flinging around with the white too. And to help make the black stand out a little bit more, I decided to paint that in too. Then I even coloured in the centres yellow. And with that drying, I'm mixing together a little bit of yellow and white paint. And we're going to use this to dirty up the teeth a little bit on the first one we painted. It's nice to add a little bit of detail like this. And you could add some black spots or blood stains, maybe some saliva, whatever you like. I also painted in the pupils a bit bigger and used my marker pen to go over the rest of the black again. And there it is, it's looking great. But to finish off this one, after I'd given everything another coat of paint to really make the colours stand out and pop, I then painted in some nice large pupils and dirtied up around the edge of these teeth as well. Next I'm using a little bit of red and pink in the corner of the eyes and I added a spot of white in the centre of each to finish it off. You might want to rearrange some of the insides a little. But there we go, it looks fantastic. And I love the way he's still full of all of that gunk. The three of them together really are quite striking. Pretty cool, huh? Now I am going to do one more pumpkin, and this one's going to be a little bit different. I started by using one of the tools to cut the top off the pumpkin, so we can remove it, like when carving a pumpkin the conventional way. Then I'm using this scoop to clean out the insides. You can also scratch out the innards if you want some pumpkin to eat. Next, I'm using this vegetable peeler to peel off a whole series of strips around the side of the pumpkin like this. And I'm going to carve a face into this fleshy part of the pumpkin here. So I selected one of my carving picks and drew on a rough design. Then I turned it around to use this cutting tool to start removing some of the pumpkin and sculpt in the face. Initially we need to remove quite a lot of the flesh, so I started with some of the bigger carving tools. But it's really fun to do. I started around the eyes and then made some definition around the nose. The mouth took a little bit of thinking of. I just started carving away, but I did find I had to peel away a little bit more of the pumpkin skin. Then I removed some more material in the mouth to make a recess and started carving in individual teeth. These little tools that came with the pumpkin carving set really make it easy to do. And it's starting to look really quite good. I added a few smile creases in the cheeks. Then I went to work a bit more on the eyes, removing a load more pumpkin flesh and carving them in with more and more detail. This really is a fun process. And although pumpkin is relatively hard, it is still soft enough to be able to carve like this relatively easily. And once I'd finished my design, I used a little bit of black paint to paint in some pupils. And there's our finished pumpkin. And if you place a lamp inside this one and dim the lights, it looks brilliant. Now if you want to see how to throw the best Halloween party with some really cool ideas to shock and surprise your guests, you can click on the link here. Have fun, stay safe and happy Halloween everyone. <laughs>